So now I'm, I'm in QuickBooks Enterprise now. And um, QuickBooks Enterprise is going to be a lot easier uh, because I don't have, I have to export manually anything into uh, Excel. But the chart of accounts concept is the exact same thing. So when I have two QuickBooks files uh, with, with two different uh, chart of accounts and you know p- potentially uh, duplicating, let me just do here this fiscal year. So we can have potentially duplicating uh, accounts like one says automobile, one says car and truck. When I when I export these uh, doing the consolidation tool, and I'll show you exactly how the cons- the combination tool works. Um, uh, you're gonna see that some accounts are gonna cross each other. And by the way, this is the same exact chart of accounts that I used in QBO, so you'll be able to appreciate it once I do the combination. So the combination is done by clicking on reports and clicking on combine reports from multiple companies. And again, this only works in QuickBooks Enterprise and every single company needs to be in QuickBooks Enterprise. So I go to combine reports from multiple companies. And then in here, I'm gonna click on add files. So I'm gonna select uh, the multiple companies that I'm working with. So in this case, we have uh, store one and store two, right? These are the two stores I wanna combine. And then in here, I get to choose uh, the date range. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna choose the beginning all the way to the end. And then I get to choose here under uh, the re- the reports, I get to select what is it that I want to combine. So I wanna select, I wanna combine balance sheet standard, I wanna combine profit and loss standard, and let's say I wanna combine profit and loss by class. And that, that's an important one for uh, eliminating intercompany transactions. Only if you did what I said, which is make sure that all intercompany transactions are tagged under a class called intercompany. And I'll, I'll show you in the Excel file, that should make a lot of sense. Um, so I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna give it a title called stores combined. So I give it a title for the Excel report. Here on the Excel options, there's a, a, a few very critical things that we have to pick. The most important one, the single most important one, is I have to make sure that this option called auto outline, auto outline, that needs to be checked. Okay, so you can't ignore that one. You have to check auto outline, and I'm gonna, this is gonna make tons of sense once I, once I show the report. And then I'm gonna click on uh, combine reports into Excel, and then it goes through the process. Okay, so I'm not gonna hit okay now because it sometimes takes five minutes, and that would be a lot of wasted time watching me wait for the report to be created. So I created the report uh, beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that report to show you exactly what that's gonna look like after it's been combined. But I do wanna show you uh, a couple of things first. So one is, if I had one company file with account numbers and a, another company file without account numbers, then I'm gonna get a real messy consolidation. I'm gonna get this issue here. Let me um, zoom this in a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. So let me zoom it in to maybe 125% so you can see better. Okay, so what happens is if I have in, in one chart of accounts, I have account numbers, and in the other one I don't, then it looks very ugly. So the first thing I'm gonna strongly recommend is either have have account numbers in all company files or don't have account numbers in all company files. That's an extremely important piece there. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out because I actually cleaned that out and then I took away uh, the account numbers. Um, so this is what it looks like after I take away the account numbers and I actually went in and I cleaned out some of the chart of accounts and let me collapse these here. So I'm going to collapse this here and show you what the PNL looks like. So for example, uh, in this particular case, and if you notice, I'm sort of uh, clicking uh, the plus and the minus pretty fast and these things are opening and closing pretty fast. That's what these things are here. Uh, the one, two, three, four, these are uh, collapse levels and that's what that auto outline option was for. So that's why I said it's very important for you to be able to collapse and expand accounts and and classes and and things like that. All right. So so what you're seeing here in this case, uh, we're going to go to automobile expense. So in this particular case, what I did was I actually went into both QuickBooks files and I and I exported the chart of accounts from one, imported it on the other and vice versa. And just real quick, how you do that is you go to file, uh, utilities, export, list to IAF, okay, so this is how you export your chart of accounts, and then you click OK, and then you save that somewhere, okay? And then once you open the other file, you go to File, Utilities, Import, IAF file, 
you pick up the chart of accounts from there, hit import, and that's going to bring the chart of accounts from one QuickBooks file to the other. And then you repeat the same thing on the other QuickBooks file, export it and import it. And this is kind of the issue when you have five, six, seven, ten companies that you actually, it's very cumbersome. You have to make sure either from the very beginning, from your planning stage, you actually went in there and created one chart of accounts and the users never created an account and everybody respected the chart of accounts, then you don't have to go through this drama. But if, if, if that's not the case, you're going to have to go out there and make sure that every single file has the same chart of accounts. If not, the consolidation is just going to look really, really strange. But the, the secondary exercise to that is after the chart of accounts is, is copied, throughout all the companies, we have to identify the potential redundant ones. That way, when we come into here, we don't have a column that says auto expense and one that says car expense. We have them consolidated into just one called auto expense. But I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in, I mean, and, and, and expand it to show you. In one QuickBooks file, I had these five sub accounts, car lease, gas, insurance, mileage, repairs. And those are coming, once I expand the account, it's very obvious that these are only on store two <coughs> but and and not really in store one but then when i see fuel insurance repairs and maintenance which are basically redundant uh these are only on store one so this this type of thing looks very confusing and very ugly because we haven't consolidated yet this is why i recommend sometimes creating those parent accounts making them as sub accounts make sure all the parent accounts have the same name that way if you do want to have a variation across different QuickBooks files. Uh, the variations are only on the sub accounts, not on the parent accounts. And Michelle, are there any questions uh, before I, uh, I do a balance sheet? Are there any questions? Um, yeah, there was, there was a question about if you needed to delete the account numbers before doing it, um, but you've only got four minutes left, so you might want to get into enterprise. <laughs> uh, actually, we were in enterprise just now. I just want to make sure that we don't miss out on that. We were in enterprise okay. um, and that, that Excel file that I'm showing you was created through the consolidation tool in Enterprise. So there's really nothing else in Enterprise that we need to do other than that we have to run the consolidation tool from there. And I want to make sure that wasn't missed out. That's here on the reports menu under combined reports. This window, it's only on QuickBooks Enterprise. And that was the way that we created the Excel file. Uh, so um, did you... Go ahead. Do you need to manually delete the account numbers? Somebody was asking. No, no. So what I recommend to do is enable or disable account numbers in the in the in QuickBooks. So we're talking about going into edit, preferences, accounting, company preferences, and then choosing to have them um, have account numbers in all the files or don't have account numbers in. That, that's the point I was trying to make. Either have account numbers in all or don't have account numbers in any. Thank you. Okay. Now, the, the other piece I want to talk to you about is, for example, if you look at this account called prepaids, okay, um, if, if you had an account called intercompany loan in both QuickBooks files where you were having one company uh, pay the other company, and then in one QuickBooks file, you have it as a negative, and the other QuickBooks file, you have it as a positive. In theory, if everything is recorded correctly, that intercompany loan should net out to zero. The big problem is that most people will put the loan receivable on the asset side on company A and the loan payable on the liability side on company B, and you're going to end up with a positive number on an asset, a, a, a positive number on liability, which pretty much nets each other out, but it looks strange in a consolidated format. So whenever you're looking at a total like this, what you don't want is to have a asset and liability match each other and then you know in your mind that that's just intercompany. It's just easier to have just a single intercompany uh, transaction where both the negatives and the positives are there. And, um, and at the end of the day, the consolidation uh, turns out to zero. So the last piece I want to show you is um, uh, profit and loss by class. So this is, uh, this is through the same uh, enterprise consolidation tool. It actually exported uh, the PNL by class and through the auto collapsing tool, like I actually have them in a very clean way. But if I actually open these by clicking on that plus sign, I'm actually going to get a PNL by class. But what I want to show you real quick here, uh, I want to show you real quick is that I do have one class in QuickBooks Enterprise called Intercompany. And I guess I sold something to the other store showing up here as 100,000. If I open up uh, the other store, so I'm going to open up the other store real quick. 
um, that's going to show up as an expense, right? Because it's, it's revenue for one, expense on the other, right? So it's a sale on one side, it's a cost on the other side. That's going to show up as an expense. And what I want to avoid is to report an income and an expense that are essentially intercompany. So let me hit here uh, by class so you can see it. So there it is. So now you can see it there under subcontractor, 100,000. So what I want to avoid is when I'm looking at this financial report, and let me collapse these again. So I'm going to collapse these totally. So what I'm, I'm avoiding to see is that on the revenue side and the cost of goods sold, sold side, which is the two accounts that I use, these are both overstated by 100,000. Um, so it's very cumbersome to have to manually remove intercompany transactions, but it's actually quite easy if you do that technique where you put them under intercompany class, because then you can identify them here real quick, and you can just basically, right here, I can just replace that 100,000 with a zero, right? So it's just literally doing something in Excel, and then I'll move on to the next one, and then I should have, in this case, now this is a cost of goods sold for 100,000, replace that with zero, and that's actually a pretty simple uh, concept. And then when I'm looking at this financial statements collapsed, um, the gross profit in this case is the same because it was positive 100 minus negative 100, but I don't overstate my income and I don't overstate my cost of goods sold. That's, that's basically a cheat sheet, a quick way to, um, to, to remove intercompany transactions.